couple other fun things I can do. I can play with the boundaries here. If I increase or decrease the boundaries here, we can see we're changing the sphere of influence for the, for the squash effect. So I'm just going to increase them a little bit, actually. I'm going to take those boundaries up to let's back out a little bit here. I don't know, about 1.5, 1.6, something like that. That's just producing a more pleasing rounded squash effect that I just prefer. All right, so now we've got a squash effect happening. Okay, so now in our perspective view, let's examine this. I'm pressing 6 and I'm dollying back a little bit so we can kind of see a little bit better. And let's scrub through here. Um, all right, well, it's doing something but it's not really doing what I want. In fact, the ball is sort of entering and exiting the influence of the squash handle. What I want in this case is I want the handle to be attached to the ball so that when the ball bounces back, the squash handle is going to be attached to it. So we're gonna, what we're going to do here is we're going to link or parent these objects together. We want the handle to follow the ball. So that means the handle is going to be the child and the ball is going to be the parent. So in any viewport, I'll just go to a wireframe view and I'm going to select the handle. And let's just use the select tool to make it easier to see. I'm going to select the handle. I'm holding down the shift key and clicking the ball. And I'm about ready to create a parent-child relationship and this is what you need to see. The handle must be highlighted in white and the ball highlighted in green. That means the ball is the most recently selected object or the so-called lead object. So once again, I need to select the handle, which is going to be the child. And I'm going to shift select the ball, which is going to be the parent. And then I press the P key on the keyboard, P for parent. Now if I scrub in my timeline, there you go. The handle is attached or parented to the ball. And if we move our time index to like frame 32, go back to the squash inputs and adjust the squash factor, you'll see here now that the squash is obeying the rotation of the ball. Very good. Okay, so I'm going to go back to frame 24, which is the point of impact. And I'm going to set the squash factor. And in my case, I'll set it to you know, fairly extreme. Might be uh, negative 0 0.5. Maybe I'll just go to the squash factor and type it in. So negative 0.5. Now that seems a little bit much. I think that's a bit too exaggerated. So let's do negative 0.4. And notice once again that the ball is not touching the ground now. So we are going to have to adjust the vertical position at frame 24. So I'll go back to the ball, open up the graph editor, which I've had minimized. Remember, it's under Window, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. And it's the Translate Y that I'm concerned with, so I'll highlight that. Press the F key to frame the curve. And I want to move this keyframe, change its value at frame 24. So I'm on frame 24 in my timeline. I select the keyframe, maybe dolly forward a little bit with Alt and right mouse and position with Alt and middle mouse, getting really close there. I'll press the W key, which is the move keys tool, and I can hold down Shift and middle mouse. There we go. So I'm able to exactly dial in the position of the ball by moving the keyframe. Again, Press the W key to get the Move Keys tool. Select with left mouse. Hold down Shift and middle mouse click and drag to move the keyframe up and down. So now we've got the position corrected for that squash. And we're going to continue onward by creating squash keyframes. So I'll select the squash handle and open up its inputs in the channel box. And here I am on frame 24, 
and we're going to keyframe the squash factor. So this time I'm going to choose to select the name of the attribute, and instead of hitting S, which would keyframe all of these channels, I'm just going to go up to the channel menu and choose key selected. So I've got a squash factor of negative 0.4 at frame 24. And if I deselect it, I will not see the keyframes. So I want to make sure I have the handle selected. And I also need to have the input node selected too in order to see the keyframes. So there you go. So I've got the input node selected and now I can see a keyframe at frame 24. So I'm going to go forward a few frames, one, two, three, four frames forward, and I'm going to change the squash factor. So we'll make it a positive value, but not as extreme. So instead of positive 0.4, let's make it positive 0.3. So I'll type in a point and a three and enter. Then once again, we'll set a keyframe, select the name of the attribute, channels, key selected. So we're just keying only that attribute and scrub in the timeline and you see I've got squash and stretch. So I'll go forward a few more frames, one, two, three, four frames. The factor is going to go back into negative value, but again, not as extreme. We want it to level out. So we'll set this to a negative 0.2, press enter, select the factor, channels, key selected. Scrub in the timeline once again. So squashing down, stretching out, and then squashing down again. And we'll just continue that process. So we'll go forward a few more frames. One, two, three, four. Maybe position better in our front view. Set the factor to be a positive value now. We're going back to positive, except again, not as extreme. So we'll set the factor to positive 0.1 and press enter, select the factor, channels, key selected. We've got a new keyframe now. So we're seeing it oscillate. Okay, so we're just gonna make one or two more keys, another four frames forward, one, two, three, four. In fact, we might even be able to just set it back to zero now. And we'll set it to zero and enter. Select the name of the attribute, channels, key selected. Scrub across and see that's what it looks like in the front view. Let's go to our camera view. Scrub across, and that's not bad. So after the bounce, it's squashing and stretching a couple of times. We can rewind back to frame one and play the entire animation. And you'll immediately see that we've got a problem, which is that the ball is squashed to its full amount on frame one. Okay, and that's because our first keyframe on the squash factor is on frame 24. So we do need to add another keyframe. We need to have a keyframe value of zero at frame one. So I'll go back to frame one, set the factor to zero, enter, select the name, channels, key selected once again. Going back to the camera view and playing back. And we're still not out of the woods because although it does have a squash value of zero on frame one, let's look at this in the front view, it does have a squash value of zero at frame one. But as we go forward, it's interpolating. It's filling in all the in-between values. So that's key frame interpolation. So what we want actually is we don't want it to fill in the in-between frames. We want to maintain a value of zero until frame 24 and then immediately jump to the new squash factor value. We don't want to interpolate. 